What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dreadlabs and today I'm going to make this monotone 3D effect in Adobe Photoshop. Alright, so in today's video I'm going to explain to you a couple of methods in how to create this fake 3D effect using only two colors, in this case black and white. And I'm also going to show you how to separate those colors and how you can use this in order to make cool vintage 3D looking designs. So. As you might have guessed, if you have a little bit of experience in Photoshop, uh, something that we use a lot in this effect is a threshold effect. And a threshold effect essentially means that this separates your design into two colors, black and white. There's no in-between, there's no grayscale, there's no color in there, just black and white. So what we're going to do is recreate these. Uh, let's start with the top one. Uh, also, if you want to get the fonts for these, these are all available in Adobe Fonts. So let's start with the first one. And the name of that font is called Eggman Psych. And I'm gonna use the large because it's a little bit more uh, condensed. So let's type in Dreadlabs. All right. So the first thing we wanna do, if we take a look at our reference, is create a fake 3D uh, effect. And we're gonna do that with a layer style, uh, the bevel and emboss. So I'm gonna bring this to the middle here and we're going to click reset to default so you guys can follow along exactly as I would do it. So the first thing you want to do is up the size a little bit and you can already see a little bit of shadow uh, created and we want to have more shadow in this so we want to bring up the opacity of the shadow here. Um, and essentially you want to play around with this a little bit, uh, the size and the depth mainly. Um, and since this is getting kind of harsh and we want to like have this soft 3D effect, I'm going to put soften all the way up. So this creates a more smooth shadow here. And in the angle, you can also play around with this. I like to have my angle at 140 degrees, so the shadow is nice at the right bottom. So if you're happy with this, uh, you're good to go. Um, if you want to have a little bit more depth in there, uh, what I would do is also add an inner glow. And I'll also reset this to default. And for the color, we're going to click black. And of course, if we use black, we need to bring the blend mode to normal and the opacity all the way to 100%. Let's up the size a little bit. As you can see, it starts kind of choking our, uh, our design a little bit. So what we can do is play around with the range a little bit, bring that a little bit up and lower the opacity just a little bit. So now we have a nice 3D looking uh, effect, but if we zoom in, you can see a lot of gray uh, grayscale and that's essentially not what we want. So what we're gonna do is add a threshold adjustment layer. So if we click on that, as you can see, if we zoom in now, there's only black and white. So a cool method to create more depth, uh, I find out, is to add noise to your designs. So I'm going to right click on our text layer here and click on convert to smart object. So now it's a smart object and essentially means that we can add filter effects to it and adjust them later. So we're going to go to filter, noise, add noise. And you can already see that it starts to look uh, like the desired effect. So uh, the amount I'm using here is 50% and I'm going to use a uniform and monochromatic noise. Essentially, that doesn't really matter that much because it's going to be black and white regardless. Anyways, if we zoom in, there's also a lot of gray scale still in here, but this also created a nice effect. So if you're happy with this already, you can just go with this. But if we turn on the threshold again, as you can see, now we only have black and white imagery. And if we zoom out, it still has a 3D loop. So that's kind of what we want to go for here. So uh, let me just clip that to our first layer and we'll group this and this is text number one. Okay, so what's really happening here is because we add noise, there's a little bit more data in there. Uh, you might already find out, like if you want to use this effect, you need depth in your image. You cannot do this with a text with a single color because it's just going to turn either black or white. So we need a lot of pixel data, we need a lot of color data and light and dark data. And something that you can do to add that a little bit more is to add noise. We already saw that if we remove the threshold here, if we just turn off the noise, you can kind of see it just adds a lot more in there, especially on the white parts of the text. If we add in the noise back, uh, yeah, you can really see that this, uh, yeah, if you zoom out, it starts to look a little bit weird. So be wary of that. Um, essentially, this helps you uh, create a little bit more depth, even if you're using a threshold effect. So uh, you already saw a little bit. If we zoom out, it starts to look a little bit weird again. Uh, and that's because, uh, of course, uh, these are all single pixels. These noise, this grain that we've added, uh, it contains like a different uh, colored pixel every other pixel. And if we zoom out, we're just seeing less and less pixels. So a way we can counter this is we can increase the size of our noise, right? Uh, so a way we can do that is go to Filter, Pixelate, Mosaic. And now we have a cell size of two, which basically means that every two pixels are getting clumped together. 
and the higher we're doing this the more pixelated it gets of course i would usually use this as a cell size of two or three um two is fine for now and as you can see this makes it a little bit larger uh, but it also removes a lot of the detail of course uh, because every pixel will blur together which essentially means that there's less noise in there um, so yeah, that's method number one. We can also do something else here because we have multiple ways to add grain to our image. All right, so let's make a new one really quick. Uh, so the fonts I'm gonna use for this one, Quincy CF Medium is the one that I used. And I use that at a text width of 70%. And uh, you cannot see it in the layer menu because it's clipped somewhere. Let's just put this all the way to the top. All right, so for the serif font, I think I want to have a little bit of a different bevel and emboss. So let's go back into our bevel and emboss menu, remove the soften. And what I want to do is change the gloss contour to a ring to have a little bit more of a chrome effect to it. Uh, we'll up the depth, but we'll lower the size a little bit. So we have these nice edges. Uh, and also we'll just do a gradient overlay, um, something like this. So we have like a nice metallic looking text, I guess. Um, all right, so what we're going to do next is convert this to a smart object so we can add filters to this. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to apply the threshold immediately. And as you can see, yeah, this just doesn't work because uh, of the like, it just, you know, the metallic loop is almost completely gone. So what we want to do is go to filter, filter gallery. And under the texture, we have a grain effect. And uh, you can just use the regular grain if you want to. And this results in a kind of similar effect to the top one. But if we double click, we can just change it to clumped. And the clumped uh, grain has a little bit more uh, larger, larger clumps of grain, if that makes sense, of course. So if we put this all the way to the top, maybe lower the contrast just a little bit. See how that works out. Okay, so it's a little bit dark still. So maybe we'll just lower the contrast a little bit. And the cool thing is we can stack this with another grain, which then will be regular. So this lightens it a little bit up more. And as you can see, we now have like this different types of uh, grain applied. And let's just make this one invisible so we can see the larger clumps. Uh, so yeah, this gives you a little bit more of these larger, larger effects uh, a little bit. And if this happens to you, like when the text gets too dark, uh, something that you can do is also double click into your text and for example, add a white stroke around your text so it's still a little bit more readable. So let's just save this, see what it looks like. So now we have this nice outline and which makes the whole text uh, a little bit more visible. All right, so you can use noise, you can use the filter gallery, um, but for the third one, let's just show them real quick. I'm just gonna make everything invisible. So for this one, we uh, did this something a little bit differently. So this looks like we used a uh, threshold. Uh, I think it's this one, right? Yeah. So this looks like we use a threshold, but as you can see in the layer menu, there is no threshold here. Uh, so what we used here is the filter gallery because it also has a lot of options regarding high contrast effects. So we can kind of mimic a threshold effect a little bit. All right. So the next font is called Graveblade. So for this, we're gonna make a harsh, harsh bevel and emboss. Uh, I don't think I wanna go with the gloss contour. I think this one works well, like a higher size, high depth. Um, let's see, a little bit less, maybe. And a nice gradient overlay, like that. All right, so we'll convert this into a smart object. And the first thing we're gonna do is add some noise. So there is already a little bit of noise in here. Uh, it also already looks a little bit, well, it looks pretty good already, but uh, I want to show you another effect in the filter gallery. So if you go to the filter gallery, we'll remove these grain layers that we just made. And under sketch, there's also the graphic pen effect. And this one gives also a lot of very, very cool results. So, okay, let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, the stroke length essentially means if we zoom in, you can kind of see it here and there, but it's a little bit hard to see because it's a noisy, noisy layer. But if we make it shorter, you can see that there's like a lot more uh, well, dots going on. I like to put this all the way to 15. Uh, you can also change the direction. And again, it's a little bit hard to see with these with the left diagonal, you can really see. As you can see, it's like going like this, this way. Um, and uh, essentially the light dark balance is a little bit like the threshold slider. You can just choose how much uh, detail you want to be in there. 
and this gives you some like really nice sketch looking results right so let's go to the last one which is called Kirkner and what I really like about this font is that it has like really bubbly round letters and the last effect works really really well on that so let's go with a bevel and emboss we'll do some nice shadows uh, we'll soften this one up again because it's a little bit more round we'll do an inner glow which is like we're gonna make it really dark and a little bit larger and we'll make it precise a little bit more I guess uh, a little bit smaller like that and finally we'll just do a subtle gradient overlay the linear one I guess uh, we'll reverse that so it's at the bottom As long as there's a lot of shadow in there. Um, actually, for the sake of this, let's just see what we had before. Um, okay, so the one I made is, well, it has a little bit more shadow, as you can see. Um, so I'm just going to use the other one. But it doesn't really matter that much, but I just want to make this look as cool as possible for you guys. Which actually brings me to uh, something. If you want to have all of these effects, uh, you're too lazy or you don't want to follow this tutorial along or you just want to have the exact settings that I used in this video, uh, you can get the PSD file for this if you become a patron of mine. Uh, there's a link down in the description or if you want to learn more, stick around until the end of the video. Alright, so now that we have this, let's open up the filter gallery. And actually, before we start doing this, uh, as with everything used in the filter gallery, make sure that your foreground and background colors are set to black and white. And you can do that by pressing D on your keyboard. So yeah, once we press D on our keyboard, we'll go to the filter gallery. And you can already kind of see what's happening here, but I'm just going to go to the texture one and we'll add a nice grain. Uh, we'll do a regular one, a lot of contrast. And the intensity all the way to 100%. So there's a lot of pixel data in there. And as you can see in the grain uh, effect in the filter gallery, you actually also have colored grain, but it's going to be removed in a second because we are going to use the graphic pen effect. And looking at this, now you can really see these stroke lengths coming to fruition. Because if we lower that, it's it just looks grainy, which is also really cool. But if we up the stroke length, you can really see those sketching sketching lines there. So it's a really cool thing. Uh, and the darker we make this, the nice like this dark outline it has. I love this effect. So yeah, there you go. Uh, one other option, for example, the stamp effect also does this, but this is really, really large clumps. So if this is something you're interested in, you can also try this. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go with the graphic pen because this just looks so cool. It reminds me of Dr. Seuss or something. All right. So now we have four pieces of text and um, I want to show you also how to separate these colors a little bit. So let's say that we want to have two different colors on this. What we can do easily is just grab a gradient map, clip that to our group and, you know, change the colors. As you can see, um, this works fairly easily what also is a possibility because we have is like black background of course uh, let's just make this black background like gray and let's say that we want to have only the white colors of this layer so that's actually an easy way to do that let's just double click on our group and here under where it says current layer let's just grab the black uh, slider and slide that in and as you can see the black layers are now gone and if we convert this into a smart object again, we can now use something like a color overlay. And now you can just decide on which color you want to use. Um, and this, of course, also works the other way around. So let's just go back and put that slider back and then just drag in the white slider. And now we only have the darker outlines. Convert it into a smart object again. And we can change it with the color overlay once more. Like that. All right, so there you have it. How to create a monotone 3D effect in Adobe Photoshop. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section or you can join us on Discord. And if you want to get the project file for this and all of my other tutorials, you can become a patron of mine. If you become a patron of mine, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, a 15% discount in my asset web store, as well as an exclusive Discord role. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive videos such as how to start a clothing brand, how to make a death metal logo from scratch, and how to make a Y2K Ray Flyer. So if this is something you're interested in, there's a link down in the description. So thanks to my patrons, I'm actually able to give you guys a free video every week. So a huge shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. 
And if you want to become a patron yourself, like I said, there's a link down in the description. And if you don't have the budget to support Dread Labs, but you still want to support our channel, you can also leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. So with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dread Labs tuning out. Good luck with doing this 3D model type effect, and hopefully see you guys in the next video.